Welcome back everybody, this is Steve, KM9G, and we are back with a QCX mini update. We're doing a build series on the channel on how to get this thing put together. I've got the 20 meter version if you're building along. Uh, it kind of doesn't matter, all you have to do is do a couple of more extra steps for the other versions or a couple of few less steps for some of the other versions depending on which band you get. Uh, but we are going to work on putting on the passives and the sockets and all kinds of other fun stuff today. So. Check up there for uh, previous episodes, check down there for a link to the playlist, and stick around and see how far we get today. Oh yeah, one more thing. Right below here, there's a whole bunch of buttons that support the channel. Join, um, subscribe, like, thumbs up, stuff in the description, tools, all kinds of wonderful stuff that you guys can use if you're building this kit, where to get the kit, all that fun stuff. Thanks. Okay, so next up is the socket for IC2. IC2 is this big long space here, so we need a big long socket to match. And I think it's this one. On sockets, there is a little dimple on one end and on the silk screen, there is a little dimple on one end. And the reason why they do that is so that you can tell which orientation the, the chip itself goes in. So you've got a dimple on the silk screen, you've got a dimple on the socket, you've got a dimple on the chip. So match all three dimples up and you are good to go. The trick with doing sockets or any long bar type deal like this is first off, make sure it goes through the hole. So I've got one pin that's slightly out of alignment. Let me get my pliers and bend that one pin back gently. And then we put it back in nice and flat. And the simple trick with these guys here that I do is I get a little bit of solder. Well, I get a lot of solder, solder on my soldering iron. And while I'm holding the chip flat in my hand, I apply it to the board. And that holds that one side in place. And we do it again for the opposite corner. And now it ain't going anywhere and we can check our work. And what I'm checking for is to make sure that it is nice and flush with the board, which it is, and it isn't canted to one side or the other or anything like that. And then we bring our solder out and we do the rest of the pins. And I had a little bit of what's called a solder bridge connecting this pin and this hole together. And I just took my soldering iron and wiped down in between them. And that is all solved, problem solved. Put my danger glasses on and inspect my work. And my first and my last pins were a little dirty. So I'm gonna clean them up and all I'm doing is reflowing the solder. And that will just clean right up nicely. Actually probably not enough solder on that pin much better. Okay, a real quick word about the soldering is all of the spot where there isn't shiny metal, the green stuff on this in this case, is what we call a solder mask. And solder won't stick to it. No matter what you do, it's very specifically designed to not be able to stick to it. So I'm actually trying my best to solder this open green spot right here, and all I'm doing is getting solder on my soldering iron. So, you have to trust that the solder does the job that the solder is supposed to do, and the, the solder mask, and the circuit board, and the through hole traces, and all that jazz do what they're supposed to do. And that is how soldering works. So, that spot that I soldered on the board, all you can see is a little bit of the rosin core from my solder that is stuck there. And I can clean that right off with my flux remover. We'll start getting rid of some trash. Next up is capacitors C12 and C29. And I'm looking for two capacitors that have 104 written on them. And I'm going to imagine that they are in this baggie.
And because I've done this once or twice before, I also imagine that it is one of these. So that's a 473. That's a 105. That's a 105. That's a 105. And I just threw it stuck to my fingers. That's a 104. I need one more. And that's a 104. Okay, so these type of capacitors, I believe, are tantalum capacitors, but I didn't look them up when I bought them. They just kind of showed up in the kit. And they do not have a polarization. So what we need to find is C12 and C29 on the board. And there is C29, I believe. I will double check. Okay, so it's right there. And the only real common practice here with these guys is to make sure that your numbers all face the same direction. So in my case, if I was to look at the board like this, I can read 104 here and I can read 104 there. And if I turn it around, it's blank and it's blank. And that's just, that's just the gentleman's agreement that we have. That's just common courtesy. So the next thing I do is I hold it down and I spread the legs out on the back side so that they hold themselves in place. And then we get our soldering iron again. And then over here, there's a bunch of components already in existence. So I wanna make sure that I'm not desoldering something else that's already on the board when I put that on. And I always give it a little flick test. Well, not always, but most of the time. And you can hear that it's connected or not connected. And always save your solder legs for later. Okay, five 474 capacitors, so we need to look for them. And these are one, two, three, four, five. That must mean something. And they all say 474 on it, so that must mean something. That was pretty easy to find. And these guys are clustered in this spot and in this spot. So what you can do with these to make your life easier is just clip them right from the paper. And make sure they don't shoot too far out of sight. Try clipping it the other way and see if that helps with the velocity. Much better. I've now improved the velocity factor of capacitors. Done. 11, 43, 44, 45, and 46. So again, I'm gonna make sure that the writing goes that way because that's how my previous writing went. And these have smaller legs, so I'm gonna put them in and splay them out right away. 43, 44, 45, 46, so all four of those. And now these guys are in a 90 degree orientation, and that's the one that I already soldered the hole through. So another tool is solder wick. And so what I'm gonna do with this is flip it over, find that hole, which is this one right here, and you put down a clean spot on the solder wick on top of the solder and you hit it with your iron and it pulls the solder out of the hole because copper is more attractive to solder. That's a little bit better. Let's see if we can get that leg through there. So in this case, I'm going to have my writing facing downwards. Okay, solder wick wasn't 100% effective. Let's keep going. This time from the top side. There we go. And that left a little bit of dirt behind. I want to clean that up real quick. And so I'm getting out my 4140A flux remover. And this is a little bottle with a tight little needle on the top of it. And so I want to take and put just enough on there to get the job done and get my anti-static brush out and brush it. And now it's all clean. So back to work. And so I used this little tiny bottle with its little tiny applicator 
because otherwise I would just pour a whole bunch of it on. So now we've got that cleaned out. Start loading these holes up. All right, double check our orientation. 474, 474, 474 looks good. And now it's getting tight in there, so I'm gonna cut off all the leads that have already been soldered. All right, another set down. All right, next up is C9 which is a 473, which just happened to be staring right at me. And C9 is right there. Okay, and now these next two capacitors come out of your low pass filter kit. And mine is the 20 meter low pass filter kit, so I'm looking for two 390 picofarad capacitors that are labeled 391. And I got two sets of twos, so let's try these yellow guys first. Oh, that's some tiny writing. Let's try these blue ones and see if they have bigger writing. A little process of elimination. No, that's worse, white on blue. It's actually more like gray on blue. Okay, so next tool in the toolbox is a jeweler's loop. So now I got my 3X magnifiers on my face and a jeweler's loop in my hand. And those are 391s. Man, that was a pain. All right, same deal. I'm going to cut these off. And where are we putting these jobbies on here? These go over here, C25 and C26. Same thing, right in going towards the bottom of the board. Bend the pins out on the back. Solder them home. Normally when you are soldering, they tell you to start with the smallest components first and that would stop that rocking on the board. Or you can use a board vise. I do not have a board vise, so I do not use one. Okay, we're getting back into the low pass filter kit for another two. And since it's a two set and I only have two and a spare, two and a third, it must be these two. But I'm going to double check it this is the gray on white text, and I'm looking for 181, and that's what those are, 181. C27 and C28, so one goes that way, so that lettering goes that way, down. Okay, I need a capacitor labeled 300 to go into C30. And he says that he includes one for every band in the kit. So there's my 300, and there is C30. Writing goes that way. Okay, well this next part is pretty easy. There are two capacitors that need to be installed, but not for the 20 meter version, so done. Okay, so I need some 105s. And I have three 105s, that's good. And they go in 21 and 22. And where is that? Over and down, 21 and 22. All right, so that writing goes down, and that writing goes left. And there's some small components around here, so I'm gonna take care not to desolder them. And then because I was being extra careful, I'm gonna check my work extra hard, and that all looks good. All right, that was not so bad. We got a whole bunch of parts installed and we are making some progress. Be sure to stay subscribed to the channel for future videos in the series while we get some more progress under our belts on this one. Stick around for uh, channel supporters, a list of members and patrons coming up next, and thanks for being awesome.